this is difficult because it's not a story I ever wanted to have to tell. And uh, typically, I'm not a guy that's good with dates. But I'll never forget October 9th, 2021, because it turned out to be pretty much the worst day of my life. Uh, I got up early that morning, hopped in my car to uh, meet a couple of friends at a nearby car show. A few miles from my home, I approached an intersection. Uh, just before that intersection, coming from my direction, which was traveling southbound, it travels downhill a little bit. Uh, again, the street was a little bit damp, but, but drying, uh, and as I approached the intersection, the light turned yellow. So I decided to give a little gas to try to make it through the light. Uh, as I entered the intersection, a car traveling northbound, waiting to turn in the left turn lane, decided to make the turn uh, in front of me. I locked up the brakes, I slammed on them, but before I knew it, that car that I noticed in the turn lane was right in front of me, and I hit her. Her car spun through the intersection, mine eventually slid through and to a stop. I didn't feel a thing. Um, it must have been the adrenaline. I'm not quite sure, but I immediately got out of the car, and my first thought was, because I don't think I was dealing with any sort of rationale at the moment was uh, I'll tap that back in, we'll, we'll buff that out, it'll, it'll be okay. Although I knew I, I just hit another vehicle at 50 miles per hour pretty much head on. I could see the hood crumpled in front of me but I didn't dare take a closer look at the car at the moment. I, I couldn't bring myself to it. So the first thing I did when I got out of the car was make my way towards the other driver. I, I legitimately wanted to make sure the other driver uh, was okay. But even as I stepped over the leaking coolant on the pavement, it hadn't quite hit me yet. It turned out that the, uh, the other driver was, was okay and not seriously injured and was thankful for that. And as I walked back towards my car, I, I saw all of this white what looked like snow on the pavement, and I, I couldn't figure out what, what that was. It, it was October, it hadn't snowed yet. It quickly dawned on me that was my paint. And then I took another look at the car, and I realized, no, it couldn't be buffed out or just tapped back into place, and the magnitude of what had happened started to hit me. Um, I eventually kind of crumpled to the sidewalk as the emotions came over me and I looked at the car and all I could see was uh, a, a totaled wreck. And as I laid on the ground and the, the tears and the emotions started to take over, I could see what I recognized as one of my trim screws laying up against the grass. It had exploded off the car through the intersection and was laying right there. The wave of emotions uh, was hard to describe. My head kind of started to fill and my ears started to buzz like I had been at a really loud rock concert and paramedics and EMS technicians and police officers and firemen were coming up to check on me and none of it was registering and they were asking if I was okay, and all I really knew was that physically I didn't feel anything, but emotionally and in my soul I felt destroyed, but there was no repairing that. They, they couldn't help me uh, with that. I still see the accident play over and over in my head. On a daily basis, I drive through that intersection and every time I go through, I can hear the thud of my car hitting the other vehicle. It, it, uh, it scrambled me pretty good and it hurt pretty bad and there were a lot of different thoughts racing through my head at the time because it wasn't just a piece of metal, it wasn't just a car, this was my grandmother's car. My grandfather bought it for her, brand new, in September of 1962. Uh, she owned it 
her entire life. It was her pride and joy until 1996 when she begrudgingly agreed to trade it for work on her daily driver. I was a few years out of college at the time. I didn't agree with the decision, but I didn't have any means to do anything different. And a car that I used to go and look at every time I visited her in her garage as it sat there for years and the hoarding piled up around it and I always wondered about that car and just was always fascinated by it. And suddenly now it was gone and it was out of the family. My grandmother passed away in 2004. I was living out west at the time and a year or two after her passing a strong urge came over me to get that car back. I, I wanted to find her Impala and if there was any way possible, if it was still around, I knew I wanted it. We found a man, owned the car in Warren, Michigan, not far from where my grandma lived in East Detroit. I got in touch with the man, uh, stayed in contact with him over the years and when I moved back to the state of Michigan uh, in 2008, about a year after that, I was able to purchase the car and bring my grandmother's car home. And I can't tell you the feeling that gave me. I felt her warm embrace as I brought that car home for the first time. She was happy that it was back. I drove it for a few years when it then became apparent that the car needed a restoration if I was going to continue to drive it any further. And in 2015 began that process. And three and a half years later, the car was complete. And it came out great. And we, we took it to Detroit's Autorama and won our class with it. I was very proud of the car and very proud to drive it and, and feel a sense of my grandmother's presence, as corny as it sounds, every time I drove it. And since the completion of the restoration, have worked tires, tirelessly to fix the little mechanical gremlins that have popped up and have worked hard to preserve it and polish it and keep it clean and keep it up running because it's a family heirloom that I have every intent and purpose of handing down to my son one day. So as I looked at that crumpled car, and I crumbled along with it, I had lost much more than, than just a piece of metal. I don't think of myself as an overly materialistic person. I think most of the things I'm blessed to have in my possession I could live without. I value my family and, and my friends and experiences. But there is one materialistic possession that I own, that I cherish above everything else, and it's that. And to know that I had a hand in destroying it was too much to bear. Who was at fault at this point is irrelevant. What does matter is that it happened, and it sits here now in this condition. Well, the insurance company looked at it and confirmed my biggest fear. It was a total loss. So I had a choice. I thought for one second about totaling it and then quickly came to my decision. I knew what to do. It had to survive. And I hope when it can, so can I. My next decision was to bring the car to Motor City Solutions. I have friends there. I know their work. And when I told them the car needed to be saved, they didn't bat an eye. Motor City accepted the challenge to bring the car back better than before. Now the work begins. This is a Motor City Resurrection, Chapter 1.